My mom and I immigrated to the US in 1997. She met my stepdad through an international dating service. My life in America was never hard so to speak. My mom always told me and my sister growing up that times were tough. As a kid, I never knew what it meant. My childhood was filled with the word no. As a kid, you're gonna want toys and to go do things with friends. My mom always said no. And if I asked my stepdad all he would say was, go ask your mama. Which always led to a, no. Now I'll say this I was never starved I was given what I needed growing up. But it was always bottom of the barrel. I remember I asked my mom for a pair of Nikes once. And I really mean once. They were $65.99 and my mom looked at me and said. You're so greedy, you are so ungrateful for what you have, your family back home could never afford nice shoes like that, don't ever ask me for shoes like that again. Until I got my first job I wore Walmart and Kmart. My mom had it drilled into my head that me asking for things that any kid would ask for was wrong. That the family back home had it so bad that I would be doing them an injustice for having clothes or toys or video games when they couldn't. A side note that is important. When I came to America initially my mom and stepdad did not want me to start school a year late. So I brain dumped Spanish and learned English. It was not until last year, 2022, that I really started taking the initiative to learn Spanish. Also a side note about my parents. They have separate bank accounts my stepdad claims that his money is his and my mom's money is hers. This will become relevant. Also, my mom would never pay for a ticket for me to visit our home country. Because she said it was too expensive and that I didn't speak Spanish anyway. I got to the point where I was very fluent in conversational Spanish. My original plan was to surprise my mom I practiced by getting in touch with family members back in our home country. I was talking to one of my cousins and I asked her how her day was. She said it was okay, but she was waiting for the wire from my mom. At first, I thought that was some sort of slang that I was not familiar with, so I asked her to clarify what she meant. She then tells me that she was waiting for my mom to send $800 down to them and that they were waiting at a Western Union for her money gram to come in. At first, I am thinking something is wrong I offer to help. My cousin says no your mom does this every month. I asked again if something was wrong my cousin said no, so then I asked how long has my mom been doing this she said since 1999. I asked her if it was always $800, my cousin explains that every month is a little different, but it's always been $600 a month. I said all right and called my mom. I told her that our cousin told me about the money you've been sending down there every month since 1999. She said yeah it's for your grandmother's medicines. I called her out no, it's not you send them money because you feel guilty about living in America and they can't. So you send them money every month and they spend it on the same things you have told me I wasn't allowed to have because I was greedy. I told her that during that conversation I asked my cousin what type of clothes and shoes they wear. They said all the name brands that I was never allowed to look at. They took vacations on my mom's dime to Brazil, Peru, and Puerto Rico. While I missed every single school field trip that required money. I got a job at 14 so I could help with groceries and buy my own clothes because I felt that I was costing my mom too much money. I explained that according to them she would send at least $600 a month down there. That would mean she has sent over 170 k I told her she could have helped me and my sister get through college, but instead, we had to take the student loan route. I asked her this question, is the reason you never bought me and my sister tickets to go visit because you didn't want us to see the truth. Her reply was, I brought you to America you had it better than all of them, you're just ungrateful. I said, no I just don't feel guilty about being here. If they really wanted to come here they should have used the 170k you sent them. If you have made it this far you might be wondering where is my stepdad and all this. His belief is, if the conversation is about money that is not his then it's not his problem. It was never about the clothes or the shoes. I just felt so betrayed because I wanted to experience what other kids around me experienced. Not everything but some things. As a kid, I was made to feel terrible for wanting anything because I supposedly had it better. I handed my mom my paychecks for years thinking times were just too tough. Just to find out that I had nothing to feel guilty about. I feel like my childhood was taken away from me because I wanted all the things a normal kid asked for. I will never understand people who put their extended family before their own children. To some, keeping up appearances is more important than anything, even their mental health. Sadly. 
I brought you to America so you could have a better life. Proceeds to send better life back home. Hey man, what you're feeling is completely justified. My mom was an immigrant too, and it's hard to move away from the it's too expensive, you're too greedy mentality of it all. Your mom prioritized your other family more than her own kids, and that's just wrong, you should have been in her best interest. And the fact you were even helping to pay for groceries from a young age is a huge act of great character on your side, but a complete failure on hers. She should have made sure you felt secure in your own home, and your stepdad is a tool for letting it slide. My boyfriend, 30M, and I, 28F, moved into a fairly large house together a few years ago. When all the COVID thing started getting out of hand we decided to open up our house to one of our friends, 30F, and my BF's cousin, 19F. The friend who moved in with us, Kate, fake name, lost her job before the pandemic, and two months ago with the end of the lease, she couldn't afford a place to live. My boyfriend and I have a common friend group that we knew since our college days, around seven years. Kate joined this group two years ago. When our friends informed us of her losing her house we decided, hey, we have free space come stay with us for a while until you can find a permanent solution. We also covered the food expenses while she helped with the chores. She accepted and moved in within a few days. When she first moved in she was acting friendly with me, but as time progressed she started becoming colder and colder towards me, but was still friendly with my BF. A month ago she started acting weird. While we were watching Netflix she started sitting in between my BF and me, touching or hitting his arm lightly when she was laughing, touching my BF's neck or hair while saying good morning to his ear or trying to massage him constantly. I didn't know what to do especially because my boyfriend was not saying anything at the time and I didn't want to be the crazy GF. However, he sat me down a week or so ago and told me he was extremely uncomfortable with the way Kate was behaving. Let me tell you I was so relieved that I was not the only one who was thinking she was acting strange lol. He said when I'm not around her behavior only increases and he didn't know what to do because he was scared of telling me this as he thought maybe he was overthinking it. We decided to speak to her if she did it again and went to bed happy. Two days ago I drove to my parents' house to visit them and help with their needs as they don't go out. I got a text two hours into my visit from my BF asking me to come back home urgently. When I returned everyone in the house was yelling and I was very confused lol. When my BF saw me he said that he wanted to talk to Kate about what she has been doing was making him uncomfortable and apparently she didn't take this well because she said she did this with everyone and when I took my BF's side more yelling and calling names happened. We told her to get her things and get out. I thought our friends would take our side when we told them about this but now the whole group is divided. Most of them said yes she was wrong if she was making us uncomfortable, but that she is just a touchy person. And we were idiots for kicking her out in a pandemic when she had nowhere else to go to. I trust my boyfriend very much as he has been nothing but an honest partner for the past five years. He said he decided to talk to her because she kept caressing his arm and touching his thigh, and he hated it. So I wanted to ask am I the idiot for kicking her out? P.S. We talked to our friends. You guys were right about how she was telling a different tale. However, they were still not willing to take her in. Some apologized and we are not friends anymore with some of them. She also apparently slept with one of the friends in the past, and we didn't know that, not sure if that makes a difference. Not the idiot. If it was a male friend touching your inner thighs and giving you unwanted massages, people would be disgusted. Why is there a double standard for men? Not the idiot. She's crossing boundaries she definitely shouldn't. Sounds like some homewrecker nonsense more than anything. Not the idiot. She is sensitive is code for she rocks the boat, and everyone else needs to work extra hard to steady it. Don't steady the boat. If they think you are jerks, tell them they can take her in. You deserve to not feel uncomfortable in your own home. Beyond that, a core tenant of consent is that the behavior is unwelcome. When told explicitly, the offender needs to back off, not claim they did nothing wrong. That is now nice guys behave, and apparently, Kate does too.